This is the village of West Wickham, found in Buckinghamshire, England. This straight road has a story to tell. We will just park right here at the foot of the hill. This is now the southern edge of the Chiltern Hills. Walking up the hill, you can see that we're treading on chalk. Do you know how much history these paths hold? This is the entrance to the Hellfire Caves, a Gothic structure. In the 1700s, this holds a secret only the elite knew. This was excavated between 1748 and 1752 for Sir Francis Dashwood, the second baronet. The story was that, in 1740, Sir Francis Dashwood helped the local community in fighting poverty. At that time, there was a succession of droughts and failed harvests. So, Dashwood employed the local farm workers to help sustain their families. He commissioned a five-kilometer road between West Wickham and High Wickham. To do this, they had to make a tunnel to mine chalk and flint for the road and the houses. Thus, the 400 meters underground tunnel dug by hand. It's considered to be an incredible feat of engineering. This is the entrance hall. In HauntedBritain.com, a local legend shared the story of Suki. Suki was a servant girl who worked at the George and Dragon Inn in the 18th century. Among her many admirers were three boys from the village whose advances she rejected since she had set her sights on becoming the mistress of an aristocrat. One day, a wealthy young man paid a visit to the inn and Suki, seeing him as her meal ticket out of there, promptly set about ensnaring him. Soon the handsome young man was besotted with a beautiful servant girl and began paying daily visits to the inn. Before we continue the story, this is the first room of the Hellfire Cave. This is called the Steward's Chamber or Whitehead's Cave. This was where the steward would pay hard workers their wages. Okay, back to the story. So the three local lads were irked and they hatched a cunning plan to teach the haughty temptress a lesson. They sent her a letter which purported to come from her noble suitor, informing her that he wished to elope with her. She was, he instructed, to don a white dress and meet him that night in the West Wickham Caves. Elated, 
the unsuspecting Suki dressed accordingly and set out for her rendezvous. Arriving at the mouth of the caves, she lit a flaming torch and set off into the labyrinth. Hidden behind a large rock, the spurned lads watched with anticipation as she approached. Just as she had passed by, they seized the torch and dashed it to the ground, extinguishing its flame. Suki was terrified and fled into the darkness with her whooping tormentors in hot pursuit. It was then that the prank turned to tragedy. As a frightened girl turned a corner, she tripped over a rock and her head struck the cave wall, knocking her unconscious. The three lads summoned help and the villagers arrived to carry the comatose girl back to her room at the George and the Dragon. A doctor was called, but in the early hours of the next morning, the poor girl died. Over the succeeding centuries, there were frequent reports of a ghostly white lady seen drifting about the George and Dragon in the early hours of the morning. Now let's talk about the Hellfire Club. Members are various political and socially important figures of the time. Their motto is do what thou wilt. Activities were allegedly sex parties, orgies, drinking, wenching, and mock rituals. The club was originally named the Brotherhood of St. Francis of Wickham. Meetings are held twice a month. This is the Banqueting Hall allegedly the largest man-made chalk cavern in the world. The cave has individual chambers connected by long, narrow passageways. Care for another story? This is about Paul Whitehead, the poet and satirist and member of the Hellfire Club. When Whitehead died in 1774, his request was to have his heart cut out and be buried in some corner of the Dashwood Mausoleum in West Wickham. Sightings of his ghost started from then on, up to the death of Sir Dashwood. But in 1839, the urn where his heart was, was stolen. From that time onward, his ghost was allegedly seen many times in the mausoleum and the caves, searching for his heart. Before reaching the final cave known as the Inner Temple, you go across a subterranean river named Styx. The Hellfire Club, founded in 1718 by Sir Francis Dashwood, held their meetings in the caves. By 1760s, it was no longer active and became a tourist attraction in 1863. <laughs> the caves run into the hillside above the West Wickham village, directly beneath St. Lawrence's Church and Mausoleum. The cave is 300 feet directly beneath it. According to David Kidd Hewitt, it was down in these caves that the sinful and dubious playground of the Hellfire Club of England was carefully constructed to challenge the morality of the Church's Christian teachings. These caves are said to hold a frightening amount of paranormal activity. 
worldwide ghost hunters love this place as it always provides them results. Well, it has a wonderful and weird history. Even Benjamin Franklin's ghost was said to be seen here as he'd been here a few times being Dashwood's friend. The Hellfire Caves are certainly a very interesting place to visit and whether you're a ghost hunter or you want to find out more about the infamous Hellfire Club and their risk activities, go at your own risk. Once you get out of the cave, don't forget to visit the Dashwood Mausoleum and St. Lawrence Church. The hillside is beautiful, the hillside which is on top of the caves. The Dashwood Mausoleum was built by Dashwood himself in 1763. The mausoleum housed the remains or ashes of the Dashwood family. It's made of Portland stone and flint. Following the mausoleum around, at the back is the St. Lawrence Church sitting on top of West Wickham Hill. The top of the tower is the highest point in the Southern Chilterns. The tower has eight bells. Rebuilt by Dashwood, this church was completed in 1763. If you like segments like these, please give us a like. And if you haven't done it yet, do subscribe.